Buenos Aires, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Cucina Quarantina. And tonight we are going to be really kind of cooking in quarantine style because we are going to use all of the things we have in the fridge. Now, I went grocery shopping about two weeks ago and they had a deal where if you bought $150 in groceries, you got a free turkey. So I didn't choose just any turkey. I chose the biggest turkey. And that turkey, how many pounds was it, Nico? 27. Yeah, 27 pounds. So here is our 27 pounder. This big boy here went in the oven on uh, what Monday, I guess it was, or Tuesday, and we cooked it up and we had sort of bacon. Yes, it is. It, we had a post Thanksgiving feast. Uh, my mom actually made the turkey on Thanksgiving, so I didn't have my own turkey leftovers. So, um, one of the things I want no, that's <laughs> yeah. sorry, I need cameraman. <laughs> This is the quality you should expect from slave labor. Yeah, exactly. So, just a few things I wanted to tell you before I tell you what I'm going to do with the turkey that we have left over. Um, roasting a turkey. I have the secret for roasting a perfect turkey without really having to think about it. What I did with this was I put this turkey into the sink. I filled up the sink with water until it was just over the top of the turkey and then put in a bunch of kosher salt and I let it brine there for the entire day. I put in really cold water and added ice cubes when I needed to. And by doing that, you infuse the turkey with juiciness. Um, when I took it out, I patted it dry and then I rubbed the skin with salt as well to try and, you know, trying to seal the pores basically. And I let it sit for just a little while. Then I um, slathered butter all over it, put in a little bit of salt and pepper, and then filled the cavity in with uh, different aromatics, things like that. So a couple of tricks to making a really tender turkey. One is the brining, two is the slathering with the butter. But then the real tricky part is you start on a high heat. I started this at 425 and I cooked it upside down. So I had the breast side down and for uh, 15 minutes, I cooked it breast side down at a high heat, 425. Then I came and took it out and this was the tricky part. Luca had to come and help me. This is the breast side, right? This is the breast side, yeah. So then I took it out Flip the entire thing right side up with the breast up uh, using towels and tongs and as many hands as possible. Put it back in and then really lower the temperature. I did 300. In the past, I've even done as low as uh, 275. And then you just let it go. So having it at that high heat first is smart because it seals all the skin and it keeps the juices in. And that's what it's all about is how do you make sure your turkey is moist. So those are the things. Brining it, slather with butter, High heat to start, 4, 425 or so for 15 minutes, then go up real low and slow after that, 300 or so in, until it's done, and um, flipping from the breast down for the first 15 minutes to the breast up for the rest. And if you do those things, you'll have a great turkey. It will always turn out. My turkeys always turn out. Um, so I know it's a bit of work, but it always turns out. Mm, um, look at those wings. Yeah. One other little thing is how do you know if your turkey is done? You don't want to overcook it. And I take temperatures and stuff, but also you can see right here how the skin has started to pull away from the end of the bone. And as soon as I see that happening, I pull it out uh, because that is usually the point at which you know that the turkey is, is done. So there's just a few different little signs you can tell. Um, and I don't mind pulling it out slightly under temperature because you remember when you pull it out, you're gonna put it on your counter, you tent it with foil and you let it sit for at least a half hour, the temperature spikes. And so it's okay to take it out a little under temperature. Okay, so just a few philosophical thoughts about the right way to cook a turkey. Everybody has their own opinion. Also, but... your views on the pop-up timer. Oh, the pop-up timers don't work. I just pulled mine out. Um, oh, and another idea, a thing that I did this time. Right there. Yes. The other thing I did as um, cooking was finishing is I took bacon and I put bacon on top of the breast. Now I didn't do that to start with because if you do that, it makes the skin on the breast all pale and yucky looking. It doesn't look very appetizing. So I wait until the last hour and I put a layer of bacon over the breast so just for extra you know, juices and good things like that. So 27 pound turkey between three people, even if I have teenagers, no way we could eat all of that. So. What we are going to do tonight is show you how to make what I'm calling Thanksgiving pie. Uh, I'm completely inventing this. Every year I challenge myself to take the Thanksgiving leftovers and make something different. Um, we used to do a turkey soup cook-off with my in-laws. 
Uh, and then after that, I've just always tried to think of what's the new thing you can do. Turkey curry, turkey pot pie, turkey, you know, there's so many different ways you can use leftovers. So this is something I'm just kind of making up. So we're going to make an actual pie. Now pie crusts, I love these Pillsbury ones that come rolled like this because they taste good and they look homemade and actually they look homemade well this is a funny uh thing that i got from my grandmother-in-law she always made the best pies in the world and everybody loved her crust she won prizes she was such a good pie chef and then i asked her one day years ago grandma lucille how is it that you have such great pie crusts and she said pillsbury doughboy <laughs> Cause she was just that kind of person. She was, she was hysterical. <laughs> Grandma Lucille is also the famous one who came up with uh, the wonderful line. Well, she had a couple of good lines. Um, one of the other lines that she came up with is that she, uh, we were sitting around one day watching TV and she, she looks at us and she goes, do you want a beer? Sure. Yeah. I'd love a beer. And she's, yeah, get me one too. <laughs> her lines. And then another great Grandma Lucille-ism was just watching some TV and there was an ice cream ad about you know luscious beautiful ice cream and uh it, the ice cream was non-fat and at this time she was like in her i don't know mid mid 80s or something and she just looks at the tv not even really speaking to us looks at the tv and goes no fat no good which was pretty classic so those are the classic uh grandma lucille lines so this is uh i guess you could say a uh, grandma lucille memorial pie because we're using her secret, her secret weapon, which is the Pillsbury Doughboy pre-made pie crust. So um, I always do this instead of getting pie crusts uh, that are like frozen, because this one's nicer. You can put it in your own pie dish, and you can form it the way you want. Uh, I always cut the edges. I'm gonna, I'm doing this right now because I'm gonna par bake this. In my imagination of this dish, it's like a pie, and it has a crust underneath it, but. I don't want the crust to be all soggy and gross. So I'm just going to take this and crimping the edges. And now that I'm done, so I've got my pie base ready to go. This is the same thing I've done when I have worked on quiches with you guys. And now I'm just going to put little slices down here. What was that? What? The slices. Oh, um, you do this to let air out because especially on the corners here, I'm gonna jab the corners like this because what will happen is that as it heats, it'll fill with kind of gases or steam or something. And then it causes this whole thing to bubble up like that. And when the pie bubbles up on the bottom like that, the crust, then you can't really use it very well. The other thing we can do is we can use pie weights, but I'm too lazy for that. I have pie weights, but- There's ISIS in the background. All right, so my oven's at 350. Just going to go ahead and pop this in here. Our, our annual ISIS cameo. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start prepping our ingredients. So I'm going to just grab a plate. And we have certain meals left over. We have lots of turkey. Lots so of turkey. Yeah. And then we have the leftover green bean casserole. And this isn't made with the... Is this the one, is this made with canned beans or not? That's this is the, the one made with the the canned beans, yes, which is not <gasps> Mama. I know. Oh. The one I made for grandma and grandpa I think turned out better because it was with fresh green beans. Yeah. But grandma oh wait, no, we we ended up tossing that out. We didn't finish it. We did? Yeah. We oh. Finish it. So I'm just gonna cut chunks here. Now cutting up your turkey and stripping the bones, it's like tough man it's i'm gonna try to do a mixture of meats so some of the watch out son coming your way you should always cut away from yourself but maybe not towards your child <laughs> so. hmm i'll just use my child as a meat shield <laughs> are you my meat shield baby okay so we're gonna cut some of this off and i'm gonna get this all prepped and ready what? and you can use as much or as little as you want and this is the fun thing this is a creative recipe so whatever it is you have left over from thanksgiving that is what you can use to make this thanksgiving pie so i'm just gonna 
shred this a little bit with my fingers. Pull out the cartilage. And what else do we have tonight for our Thanksgiving pie, Nico? Um, we have, oh, sweet potatoes. Mm -hmm. We have some sweet potatoes. Uh, I don't know, I don't know if we're going to use this, but we have some overnight salad. Yeah, I think that that probably would be best left. Oh, this is still really good. Left on the side. It's really good. <laughs> That's a really nice tender turkey. Mm. Wild dogs. I know. <laughs> well, it we're, this is how many months of us staying home all the time. I think we have essentially gone feral. Yeah. Oh, and, and the yeah, one other th ISIS. What a beggar. <laughs> <laughs> she smells the turkey. <laughs> she knows what's coming. Uh, anyways, one other thing that we have is... That's not too hot. Do you want to tell them our sad woe, tale of woe? Uh, we just have some stoked up stuffing here. But yes, our our tale of woe is as goes. Um, Mama made. Ma Mama made some, uh, some really nice stuffing with really good broth and everything. And... Um, the, there's there's a lot of uh, there's a lot discussion of, about the, what happened to that stuff. There's a lot of hearsay about the origins of this fable, yeah. but um, one way or another, it got thrown out. Yeah, Mama's wonderful, perfect porcini mushroom stuffing that used wonderful porcini mushrooms that I had brought all the way back from Italy, and yeah, it was a really good stuffing with the most amazing broth ever, and. Somehow, it that ended up in the compost at the end of our meal. So, how that happened is not for discussion, is it? N nobody is to blame specifically, right? Everybody's to blame. Well, you're not to blame. Oh, hey, thanks. Luca is to blame. <laughs> well, Luca would probably say you were to blame, so. Yeah. All right, so that's probably a good amount of... Oh. Look at that scamp. That soft, soft scamp. Ooh. So, sweet potatoes. We ate all the sweet potatoes. We, in this family, just pr really prefer sweet potatoes that are roasted. These are microwave, but roasted. And uh, just butter, salt, and pepper. That's all we like. Oh, we don't like them to be... It's so good. Yeah, it is so good. And I don't understand the people who love marshmallows on their sweet it's, potatoes. It's... It's something that a child would come up with. It's like... Well, no, it's, it's... In my view, it's something that somebody's grandma came up with because I always associate it with grandmas making sweet potatoes like that. So I've never quite understood that whole thing. I am much more a fan of just au natural sweet potatoes. So these were just cooked in the microwave. I pierced them and stuck them like, in the microwave for five minutes. Hmm, how can I, how can I eat something, how can I disguise eating something healthy under a thick layer of sweets? Mu mm, sweet potatoes and marshmallows. Hmm, genius. Jeez, cat. She, does she want more? Yeah, she's being very much here. But here we've just got this nice shredded turkey. Mm -hmm. And these sweet potatoes, mm -hmm. which, with, which have been skinned, yeah, okay. which I have tried to skin and failed. Okay, I'm just going to mash those up a little bit with a fork. Oh, oh, I know. You just want to eat these straight up right now, don't J you? Jerry Kurt asks, how do you make a pie crust from scratch? That might have to be... Uh, uh, I'm going to let Luca teach that one. That might have to be a separate... Uh, that might have to be a separate video, but... Well, the thing is that making a pie crust is actually very easy. Making a pie crust is essentially just butter and flour. And the key to it is that you have to keep the, the uh, butter super cold. And the best technique is to use a Cuisinart because you don't want to handle the dough very much. So if you put in, um, it's just basically flour, butter, salt, and a pinch of sugar if you want. You really don't want it to be like properly mixed. No, you have to make sure that there's little, little bits of flour, in, or I'm sorry, butter in it to make it nice and flaky, but you don't want to handle it very much. So. That's the real key there, is not handling it very, very much. Okay, so I think we've got, is that enough turkey, Nico, or should we put more, more turkey um, in? We should probably put the bacon in too, huh? Uh, yeah, let's do a little bit of bacon. That's probably, 
Good. The leftovers of the bacon in. Any other random leftovers we want to pile on to this? Random leftovers. I guess we'll uh, use some, we'll definitely use some of the gravy that is in the bottom of the pan. So I make gravy if you see them Oh there. yeah, here's the gravy. Yeah, I make gravy in the roasting pan. So uh, should we use some of the aromatics in the turkey? That's an idea. Yeah, let's Please. do that. Pull one of these carrots out. Yeah, go ahead and pull the carrot out. Kind of Weird camera angles incoming as I try to pull out this carrot. <laughs> there we are. Ah, that's a nice looking brown <laughs> carrot. <laughs> that's kind of gross looking, actually. <laughs> it looks like it was in a turkey. Yeah, that looks kind of disgusting. I'm sure it'll taste good, though. Does it smell good? Yeah. It smells like turkey that's carrot. So weird. Probably, <laughs> probably because you put it inside of a turkey. We may as well just eat all the things. Uh, inside the turkey, I put in carrots, onions, uh, garlic, and then a big handful of herbs from our garden. And the garden herbs, because it's been pretty mild here, are still really good. Like, I went out and the parsley bush out here, I've never seen a bush of parsley in Seattle in my whole life. It is ridiculous how big the parsley is. We're gonna have parsley. Isis is still eat. begging for turkey. Well, is she even eating what I'm throwing at her? I don't know. I don't think she is. I think she's just begging for begging's sake. It's, right. it's like this beggar on the street. Please, I need help. Oh, can I give you some money? No, I need help. What, what do you want me to give you? Help! Okay, so I like this idea of anchor. Are there any more of the aromatics from inside the turkey? Uh, let's see. Uh... As you can see, it's kind of hard to see inside of that turkey, especially with this plastic in the way. Okay. And what I'm trying to handle. I'll oh, just stop. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, so celery is in there. What else? Uh, lots of celery. Lots of celery. Uh, oh, those are all the herbs. Don't want to eat. Don't. Yeah, I think maybe what I'll do is I'll just chop up a little bit of the celery and call it good. Um, this is my mom's famous overnight salad, which it's, is... It's so good. So... Uh, Mm. It's it's really it's really really good. Totally a 1970s salad, but so good. Like it's the least gourmet -y thing I think I make, and it is always good. The, and actually, the 1970s did. had some weird food. It did. Like we we looked up this list of uh, 70s food, and there was like uh, like meat jello. Meat jello. Yeah. Do you hear that, people? Meat jello. All right. So <laughs> I'm going to put this here and then I'm going to grab. Here's our little our turkey carrots and turkey celery just chopped up. All right. So we just, this is perfect. So this is just oh, parbaked. That's nice. Yeah. So when you parbake, you just make it so that it is starting to cook. You can see those you little see? bubbles. So nice and part cooked. All right, now we just have to decide how we want to do our layers. So I think the bottom layer should be probably the sweet potato. Or maybe the or maybe the gravy. No, it'll make the crust soggy. Oh yeah, you're right. We should so have let's, yeah. Let's start with the sweet. Potato. That'll seal it. Yeah. It'll create a a watertight layer. Yeah. Eh, some turkey got got mashed in there too. That's okay. I always find it funny when um, we so separate out everything nicely on our turkey or on our Thanksgiving plates, but then some people just mash it all together in one big thing. That's weird. It's like eating it all at once. That uh, it, it doesn't seem like the flavors would blend very well. I had a friend whose husband once would take all of his food and cut it up into little pieces, no matter what it was, and mash it all together. Okay. So, let's see, yeah, the meat looks pretty good. So, uh, actually, I think let's keep with the vegetables. Okay. So the next vegetables we'll put in are the celery carrots. Look how pretty that is. I think that was a good idea of mine, putting in some of those aromatics. Mm -hmm. It'll add some texture. Yeah, it will add some texture. And then I'm gonna grab our... I wonder this, where the... by the way, is the best pie dish ever. This one is fine, this is a fiesta ware dish, but this one here, is an Emil Henri one, you can see on the bottom. These French um, ceramic bake, baking dishes are phenomenal. 
I had used these for years. I used to work at a cooking shop and I kind of saved up all my pennies when I was working there to keep buying myself them. And yeah, they are. We have some really nice pans. <laughs> well, these are wonderful because they're basically non-stick. They're so high quality that nothing really sticks to them at Yeah, all. I never really thought of that, but look at it. It just comes out. Yeah, they're wonderful that way. You don't have to scrub them. They just sort of clean up almost on their own. So this was my version of the uh, green bean casserole, and what's inside of it is caramelized onions and um, roasted mushrooms, along with the traditional green beans and the little oniony things. And like the cream of mushroom soup. And cream of mushroom soup. So it's a little old-fashioned, and it's a little newfangled. All right, now we have to add our turkey. I wonder why stuff like celery and carrots are called aromatics. They don't really have that much of a smell. What do they do? Really? Yeah, I think they really do. Huh. Do you remember what it's called when you cook onion and celery and uh, carrot together? What's that called? Onion, celery, and carrot. Yeah, there's a, if you cut it, dice that all finely and you cook it all together, what's it called? I don't. I don't know what that's called. It's called a mirepoix. A mirepoix. And red 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 red. Look how pretty this is. Oh my goodness. Gravy going on the very top. We are now at the gravy stage. Yes. Oh boy, here it comes. At the gravy stage. Okay. And there is there's a lot of gravy in there. Mm -hmm. it's, it's covered up by the turkey, but there's a lot. So oh this that, that's a big boy. That boy is very big. Up you. Thank you. Oh, congealed. look at all of that. It's all congealed, baby. It's like condensed. Congealed. Sweet, sweet and condensed gravy. Do you know what congealed is? Uh, I think so. It's kind of gelatinous. It's oh, cold. yeah. It's That's what that thing is called. Okay, so we don't want to go too crazy with this because if we go too crazy with the gravy, it'll, it, it'll make it soggy. Yeah, it'll so. be this weird, wet mess of grossness. I mean, it'll still probably taste good, but it'll just be kind of weird. That is a thing of beauty. Now, to top it all off... The top layer, the top crust. Just a little bit more. <laughs> okay, so now we've got a nice gravy crown on the whole thing. I hope you guys enjoy just like me rambling and cooking. I know this has nothing to do with travel, but I think since we're all still stuck at home, learning how to enjoy food and enjoy these downtimes is great because we're going to get back up and moving pretty soon. So I think it's great to just enjoy cooking with your family, like cooking with my babies, right? Yeah. Because travel's going to be soon. All right, so we've got our stovetop stuff in which is not as good as Mama's homemade stuff, but... It'll still be okay. You know. Yeah. It's stuffing. Well, you, I'm you, gonna have to try it. You can't really go wrong with stuffing. It's fine. Um, all I can say is I'm really glad we're not doing that keto diet right now. Ha! <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Keto Thanksgiving would have been a thing of horror. Yes. We must enjoy ourselves. Thing of nightmares. Okay. So this, I, I came up with this idea because as I was looking at the stuffing when I was cooking it, I was thinking, that looks a lot like the topping on a crumble. And then I thought, ooh, apple crumble pie. Like the, what is it, Dutch apple pie? Is that what they call it? Yeah, I think so. I love the kind no, of No, no, it's French apple pie. Yeah, I love the kind of pies that don't have a top crust but have a crumble on top. And then I thought, oh my goodness. Anything with a crumble topping is good. Yes. So this is where that this idea came from is I thought, I want a crumble topping on a savory pie. How do we make a crumble topping on a savory pie? So these are the, the deep thoughts I think about when I'm running at the lake or I'm taking a shower. R slash shower th thoughts. Exactly. And if you don't know what R slash means, that's the way that the teens talk these days. They talk in R slash. That means it's something you would find on Reddit. Because, yeah. Just so y'all can be cool with the teen, with the, your grandchildren or your children put an r slash in front of any commentary. Oh, thanks. Thank you, Jerry Kurt. That's so nice. Jerry Kurt says, uh, I love your cooking shows like this one. Uh, thank you, Sarah and Nico. Aw, thanks, Jerry. We always appreciate cooking with you. You're, you're one of our 
favorite peoples that always shows up for our cooking shows. So thank you for showing up. It's nice to have uh, friends to spend time with, even, even if we're virtual friends. MJ O'Connor says, you guys are real and this is so refreshing. <laughs> Thanks, yes, Laura. this is very intentional. Hmm. <laughs> yes. All right. All right. I think that is an absolutely gorgeous meat pie. Wow. Isn't that, that is beautiful. <laughs> Holy guacamole. Wow. Wow. That's just, I would add something to it, but I think it's perfect. So I was thinking about putting a layer of cranberry inside. Oh. But, but? I decided what we're going to do instead is once we pull it out and we cut it into pie slices, I'm going to plate it with some cranberry sauce so you can dip it into the cranberry sauce. That sounds better, just in case it doesn't quite. And we don't have the canberry sauce. We have the good stuff with actual cranberries. Yeah. Right. That's what I call canned cranberry sauce. Canberry sauce. So here we go into the oven. I'm going to bake this for about 30 minutes at 350 mm -hmm. degrees. And all that really needs to happen is it just needs to cook through. There's nothing raw in this. But I think if we cook it a little longer. Basically the pie crust just needs to cook. Yeah, essentially that's all it is. So there you go. That's my uh, imaginary use of turkey for tonight. Uh, hopefully, if my, I can get my kids to agree to be my cameraman, we can do another Cucina Quarantena this weekend, reinventing turkey yet again. I have an idea about making turkey and pizza combined somehow. Um, okay. <laughs> well, we'll have to have a discussion about that later, but okay. Okay, so we'll see if I can get my kids. Anyway, thank you for joining me for another Cucina Quarantena. Tomorrow, we have a very special guest uh, on Cucina Quarantena. It's my friend Dawn Rowe, who is actually one of you guys. She came on a tour with me, and we've become very good friends. She is going to join me from Rhode Island tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock, and she's going to teach me how to make fudge uh, in the style that her family has made. So if you'd like to learn to make uh, fudge for Christmas, that's going to be our activity tomorrow at 6 p.m. So we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye, everybody.